Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Cheating me with my best friend? I'll wreck your career and publicly humiliate both of you. So this post apparently is what triggered the pro-revenge riots of 2019 over the excessive use of acronyms to represent people. MW, FBF, FBFW, in a story. Sorry about that. I've reformed out of the story with fake names and place of acronyms. Also, at the end of the post, I've added answers to a few questions that came up repeatedly in the comments. Shidad and Sarah have been like family to my wife and I for several years, practically ever since we moved in across the street from them. The four of us were extremely tight. Our kids are the same age as theirs and are all good friends. We were one big family unit. We did dinner together a few times a week. We went on vacations together. I truly saw Shithead as a brother, and my wife and Sarah were very close too. Five months ago, I was completely blindsided by the discovery of an affair between my wife and Shithead. My wife had left her email open on her computer, and I saw an email from her to her longtime therapist saying that Shithead would be joining her at an upcoming session. Again. Uh, what the F? My mind started racing. Why in the world would Shithead be going to her therapy sessions without my knowledge? They did a research and found some other emails to and from therapists proving that Shithead had been going to sessions together with her for about six weeks. I checked her mobile phone account and discovered that, since late summer, they had been exchanging hundreds of texts every day, peaking at nearly 500 a day by the holidays. Speaking of the holidays, my wife and I hosted both of her families, parents, siblings, etc., for both Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner, and Shithead and Sarah joined us either for dinner or after dinner on both holidays. Text records showed that the entire time that they were at our house celebrating with our families, my wife and Shithead were texting each other across the room. They were doing that pretty much every time the four was hung out, for months. And, you know, all day every day, just in general. But what bothers me the most is that they were doing it with Sarah and I right there. I confronted my wife with the evidence and she admitted that yes, she and Shithead had fallen in love. It just happened. I don't know how, but I love him, and I just don't feel anything for you anymore. I'm sorry. They had gone on a school district trip together. Something happened in her hotel room, and things had moved quickly from there. She explained, as I laid face down on the couch, unable to look at her, that they had already made plans to move out and divorce me and Sarah. And while they didn't plan to move in together immediately because of the kids, they'd probably do so eventually. The meetings with the therapist were supposedly mostly for the purpose of finding a way to break this to me and Sarah, as gently as possible, because they were so very concerned for our well-being. Sarah and I are fairly certain that they weren't planning on telling us about the affair at all, and were simply going to discover their feeling for one another several months down the line, after they'd come up with some other reason to divorce the two of us. My wife moved out two months ago. I was, and still am, utterly destroyed. I cry every day. I cried writing the first few paragraphs of the story just now. I worry nonstop about the impact on her kids, but I am also not exactly a shrinking violet and I feel that I've been wronged. And in this case, I was, objectively, very, very wronged. So, a couple of years ago, she had ran for Board of Education seat as a pretty extreme underdog. I helped him with his campaign materials and debate prep, and my wife, a well-known school district employee, this becomes important later, got the word out as best she could. Much to our surprise, he actually won and a squeaker by just a few dozen votes. Being on the board became the center of Shithead's world. He joined every committee that he could. This turned into the foundation of his affair with my wife, as they were constantly going to school events and meetings together on evenings and weekends. Once I discovered the affair, my thoughts turned pretty quickly to revenge, and it occurred to me that an extramarital affair between a member of the Board of Education and an employee of the school district was at least bad politics, and possibly violated district policy. Making things far worse for them was that my wife was in the running for an open administrative position, and everyone knew that she was more or less guaranteed the job and the major pay raise that came with it. She had just finished her master's degree in school administration at the urging of her principal and the superintendent so that she could be promoted to the specific position. I had plenty of evidence of the affair, texts from both of them admitting to it, text records showing that they were texting hundreds of times a day, emails to and from the therapist, etc., I considered simply emailing all of the evidence to the board and the superintendent, but felt like I, as the grieving, betrayed spouse, might not be seen as a credible source. So instead, I invented a fictitious, furious friend who was planning on showing up to the next board meeting and publicly shaming the two of them for their affair. I told my wife that I'd try to talk this person down, but couldn't guarantee that they wouldn't show up and humiliate them publicly. As I expected, 
This led Shithead to conclude that the only option was for him to preemptively admit the affair to the board. The superintendent subsequently recommended that Shithead resign, which he did. Sarah said that she was utterly humiliated and crushed, and Bailey got out of bed for a few days afterward. Once word of the affair and Shithead's resignation started getting round, the superintendent, a longtime friend of both my wife and Shithead, contacted my wife and tearfully informed her that it was no longer politically appropriate for her to be promoted to an administrative position within the district. The position that had been lined up for her was later filled by an outside candidate. This sent waves of confusion and rumor throughout the district, as it was pretty well known that my wife was getting the job. The day after she was informed that she wasn't getting the promotion, my wife and I, despite her crumbling marriage, took her son out to breakfast together on his birthday, and her parents stopped by her table to congratulate her on her new role. She said thanks, then excused herself to go cry in the bathroom for a while. I let the dust settle for a couple of weeks, and then, right before my wife moved out, let them in on my little secret. There was never a furious friend, threatening to expose them in the first place. Just me. Word of all of this has gotten around our fairly small town, which Shithead grew up in, and my wife has worked in for nearly 20 years. My wife refuses to talk to me about how things are at work now, but I've heard from some people I know in the district that her formerly spotless reputation has taken a major hit. Shithead, formerly a gregarious social presence in her neighborhood, and at events and pubs in town, has completely gone underground and barely emerges to mow his lawn. He's moving out soon, to a shitty little townhouse, which is all he can afford, due to all the child support he's going to have to pay his wife. My wife and Shithead claim that they plan on trying to make things work together, despite all the pub of humiliation. I wish them lots of luck with that. I'm sure it'll be a lot of fun to show their faces together in town. Edit. Here's a log of their text calls over the course of a few months before I discovered the affair. Obviously, their phone numbers have been stripped out. Answers to some common questions in the comments. Are you and Sarah a thing now? You should totally be a thing. That would be awesome. No. We're friends. We've been incredibly important to each other since this all started, and have certainly gotten a lot closer. But not in the way everyone's thinking. This would all be so much harder to deal with if I didn't have her to lean on. And she says she feels the same way about me. We're going through basically the exact same situation, but the same players after all. Shedad hasn't moved out yet. Once he does... We plan to go back to getting the kid together more often like they used to. It'll never be the same, of course. She already does come over with the kids from time to time, but it's just tough with Shithead's constant presence across the street. Didn't your revenge hurt both sets of kids? Not really. Shithead has a day job. The Board of Education was his hobby and his passion, but this didn't affect his income at all. And my wife has been assured that if she wants to pursue an administrative position with another district, she'll have glowing letters of recommendation from her superintendent and principal. It don't mean giving up a lot of work relationship in the process, but given the hit her reputation has taken, I'm guessing she makes the jump sooner rather than later. In the meantime, not moving to an administrative job means that she still has summers off with the kids. Why do you call her your wife instead of your former wife? We're working our way through divorce mediation, but it isn't final yet. We'll be soon. Why didn't you notice all the texting your wife was doing? Well, I did. It was really starting to piss me off. It was excessive. She has a big social circle, and does tend to text a lot anyway. But it was really getting over the top, to the point where she was completely ignoring me and the kids. At one point in November, I asked her to agree to a uh, no phones at the dinner table rule, which she agreed to reluctantly, but then would pout through dinner, and eventually she just started using her phone during dinner again. All that said, I was blind. Not only was the texting getting weird, but her relationship with Shithead was starting to make me uncomfortable. Sarah noticed that too and agreed. We confronted them a couple of times about her directly, and they both swore up and down that it was just school stuff that they were talking about. There was nothing else going on, and for whatever reason, we believed them. Probably because the mind tends to refuse to see things that it doesn't want to see. Thanks, by the way, for all the support in the comments. I couldn't reply to everyone, but I did read them all, and I appreciate them. Even the brutally honest feedback from people who feel that I did the wrong thing. Posting this and reading all the responses introduced me to perspectives I hadn't considered about all this, and reminded me most of all that the anguish I'm dealing with is pretty normal given the situation I'm going through. I had a pretty okay Memorial Day weekend, even though I missed my wife, and thought a lot about the things we'd probably be doing as a family. I'm taking my kids camping next weekend and having something like that to look forward to, and plan has me feeling pretty good today. On to the next story. Boyfriend cheats on me with my step-sibling, so I get him kicked out and destroy his relationship with his parents. I've been wanting to post my story on here for absolutely ages, but I just never got around to doing it. So, then I figured, since I have a Reddit account now, I might as well post it. 
When I was around 17, I started dating a guy, 19. I'll call him Jake for the sake of this post. Also, age of consent where I live is 16, so nothing illegal happening here. We got on well, spent a lot of time together and care for each other a lot. We even started talking about living together once we both moved out. We were a perfectly happy couple. Or so I thought. You see, after we'd been dating for a few months, something in Jake changed. He was getting a lot more distant. Whenever he was with me, he'd be checking his phone constantly. We stopped spending as much time together, and he started to get really funny about public affection. Regarding things like hand-holding and stuff. He also seemed to start caring less and less about my feelings. I used to have a bit of a thing for humiliation in the bedroom. Nothing too far. And we'd spoken about what Jake should and shouldn't say. But he started to get more and more degrading. He'd tell me how no one would ever love me and would pick on my insecurities. I actually broke down crying a few times when this happened. To give him a bit of credit, the first few times he did stop everything he was doing and apologize to cuddle with me until I felt better. But eventually, that stopped too. And he just began rolling his eyes and telling me to grow up. He was like a completely different person. The insults started to seep into our everyday life. He'd pick up my appearance a lot, bring up my family. I was dealing with a lot of family issues at the time. Bring up the fact that I slept around before we started dating, a sort of rebellion caused by the family issues, etc. If I got upset by it, he'd just leave the room and let me cry by myself. I started to feel like it was my fault our relationship was falling apart. Maybe I just wasn't good enough for him. I knew deep down that he was cheating on me, and that was confirmed when I got a message from a guy, David, on Facebook, telling me that he'd been sleeping with Jake. He apologized profusely and told me that he broke things off with Jake as soon as he found out he had a boyfriend. I couldn't be mad at David. It wasn't his fault. We spoke for hours and I reassured David that it wasn't his fault and that he'd done nothing wrong. David also helped me to stop making excuses for Jake's attitude and the way he'd been acting. He was a godsend. The thing that truly broke me happened not too long after the cheating was discovered. We'd been arguing a hell of a lot more. Then he decided to do something absolutely unforgivable. You see, I had a stained relationship with my father for years. He'd cheated my mother constantly and eventually, he'd settled down and had kids with a girl he'd been seeing behind her back. He did try to have some sort of relationship with me till I was about 13, 14-ish. And then decided that he didn't love me as much as his other kids and we stopped any and all contact. It broke me and it still hurts to think about it to this day. Anyway, Jake went out of his way to find one of my step-siblings online and slept with them. He bragged about it the next day and my step-sibling actually posted online about what had happened, and I received a bunch of messages from their friends telling me how I had deserved it. This was probably the lowest point in my life and I hated myself, partially for allowing it to happen, and partly because I had started to believe what they were saying. My only solace during this time was David. I didn't want to burden my friends with my problems, and David was one of the only people who knew, firsthand, what Jake was like. We spoke for a few weeks and eventually, talk turned to revenge. I had tried calling these off a couple months prior due to Jake's awful behavior, but he started with the apologies and telling me he didn't mean it. He'd never do it again. He even spoke to some of my family members who, unknowingly, pressured me to get back together with him, as we were such a sweet couple. I hadn't wanted to tell them the real reason that we'd broken up, so I kept the details pretty vague, though I'm pretty sure some of them had seen my step-siblings post and knew why I didn't want to be with him. After weeks of talking and planning, I had finally had enough and decided to do something about it. My father wasn't exactly a rich man, but he worked a pretty well-paying job and earned enough money to live fairly comfortably. He had begun spreading rumors around when I was younger, during a custody battle with my mother, that he had set up a trust fund for me and that there was enough money there to get me set up in my own place when I was 18, plus a bit extra. I knew that this was absolute BS. He tried to get out of paying child support all the time. Of course, he'd never set up a trust fund for me. However, Jake didn't. We'd never spoken about it a lot, but he'd heard the rumors, and I'd just always say what I told you folks. My father was an appalling parent who grudged paying my mother child support, so why the hell would he set up a trust fund? But Jake wouldn't listen. He even did his own research into the type of job my father worked and came up with an estimate of how much he thought my father was earning. Though, to his credit, he did drop the subject whenever I asked him to, for a while anyways. I decided to use this to my advantage. Jake and I were still dating, though I avoided him at any chance I got. Until one night, where I sat him down and told him that since I'd be turning 18 in a couple of weeks, I'd started thinking about us getting our own place. With the trust fund my father had set up for me. He immediately cheered up at this, and honestly, I think that night was the first time in months that he'd said anything nice to me when we weren't in public or with friends and family. This very nearly made me want to call the whole thing off. 
But I spoke with David later that night, and he reminded me that Jake would go back to his usual degrading attitude in no time. We started looking at flats, though Jake was kind enough to let me have the final say and handle the paperwork, because how could he possibly go out and cheat on me if he had to sort out the paperwork for a flat? I was a little surprised by this, to be very honest, as I'd always thought that he'd want his name on the paperwork and everything, so I couldn't kick him out. But by this point, he'd slept with my step-sibling, degraded me, smashed my self-confidence to pieces, and cheated on me regularly. I think by now, he thought I wouldn't kick him out no matter what he did. Anyways, I started taking up extra shifts at work to try and save enough money to actually move out. Not with Jake, though. Oh, no. I was moving in with my friend Emma. We had both been thinking about moving out for a while anyways and thought, why not just be roommates? We found a cute little one-bedroom flat that was close to our college and work and started getting stuff sorted to move in. I also didn't want to bring any trouble to my mother's door if Jake started kicking up a fuss. Emma had no issues with clawing the face off him, if need be, and told me not to worry about him coming to our front door. Then came the next part of the plan. I waited till the week or so before Jake and I were supposedly moving into our own flat and sold his phone for a few minutes. He'd stopped caring about leaving his phone unintended and would sometimes flat out brag about how lucky he was to be able to sleep with whoever he wanted and come home to a little bitch who'd make him dinner. So that day, when he went for a shower, he wasn't all too bothered about taking his phone with him. Perfect. I went on to his phone, deleted my number from his contacts, and changed the name of his MM's contact as mine. Please, I went to the kitchen, smashed one of the plates, it was my mother's, but it was a cheap one from a local shop, and I did replace it as soon as possible. I left for work once everything was done. My mother had left for work a couple hours prior, so she was safe. I just needed a reason for him to get pissed off. And oh boy, did he get pissed off. His first reaction was to text me, calling me all the disgusting names under the sun. Except it wasn't me he texted. It was his mom. I texted her in advance and told her that I hoped she'd forgive me, but she had to see what her son was really like. She'd never tried to defend him as much as she just hadn't known quite how bad his behavior was. She'd actually called him out a couple of times where he'd slipped up and been harsh with me when she was there. She went apeshit. I never found out exactly how the argument went, as she phoned him to scream at him and called him out for his crabby behavior, finally seeing how horrible her son was. It didn't help that she'd been sent screenshots of some of the times where he'd admitted to cheating. She was absolutely disgusted by her son's behavior and phoned me to apologize on Jake's behalf. It wasn't her fault, though. He's old enough to know how to act like a damn adult. He wound up telling his mom essentially that her pinning didn't matter, as he'd be moving in with me anyways. Needless to say, when he called me on Facebook, after I deleted my number from his phone, I took some satisfaction in telling him that we weren't moving in together, that the trust fund wasn't real. I'd already told him that in the past, he just refused to listen, and that I'd moved in with Emma. I was called all the sluts and whores under the sun. His voice sort of turned into white noise after a while. I told him we were over and hung up, blocked him on everything. He had to run back to his mom and dad, his tail between his legs, and they took him back for a little while. Though, after a bit, the arguments became too much and his parents kicked him out. He stayed with a couple of friends for a few months before he managed to get his own place. His parents, especially his mother, have not been the same with him since. I still talk to his mom on occasion. Lastly, David and I took the liberty of sending screenshots of Jake's abuse to as many of the peoples he'd been hooking up with as possible. A couple of sleepless nights were spent trying to track people down on Facebook. Part of it was to get back at Jake, but most of it was to make sure that none of them got roped into a full-on relationship with him and had to deal with all the crap I'd gone through. So there it is, the little story of pro-revenge. I know this is really long, so there's a TLDR below. I wasn't ever planning on posting my story, but I was scrolling to Facebook the other day, and one of Jake's new accounts popped up on the People You May Know section. After talking with Emma about it, she suggested posting it here. I hope it fits in this subreddit. Bye. Edit. Okay, first, thank you for all the kind comments and awards. I'm doing a lot better now. This happened a few years ago, and I haven't had to deal with Jake since. Secondly, I saw a few people getting confused about the plate part, thinking I was still in the house, so why would he text me? I had left for work by the time he'd gotten out of the shower, so he couldn't yell at me. Also, my mother was at work, so I didn't leave her with him. Don't worry. I edited this and my original post just to clear things up for people, just in case by some chance they don't see the edit. I hope this helps. Last quick ad. I saw a lot of people were confused in the comments about my gender. I'm a bisexual male. Jake was also bisexual. I hope this cleared up some confusion. I don't know why I hadn't written it before now.